Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joey Potter, and I am with the Shell Eco Marathon team, and I am from the Chassis team. Uh, my group members are Nick Pittori, Thomas Ferguson, and Sam Bowers. So our goal in the past two years was to design and construct a chassis that functions within the Shell Eco Marathon competition requirements, and this competition was to happen in early April of 2020. So. We had a car to work with um, from a previous team that graduated uh, last year, um, but we had to start fresh. So every two years, the car and the competition must experience a update of changes, and these changes must be of, of significant change, whether that's to body design, engine, or other sort of uh, chassis fabrications that can kind of show that significant change. Um, so where we started and uh, what we started with starting fresh was the weight. Um, the previous car started with a uh, heavier material, so we focused on making that into a lighter material. Um, and by doing this, we uh, ended up changing our body design and our chassis design using different materials and other uh, sort of modifications. Um, our miles per gallon, um, we wanted to do this because uh, our previous team achieved a miles per gallon of 184, um, and in this competition, it is set to drive around a track, and you are measured the amount of fuel and the amount of usage of that fuel, and with doing so, um, you are to measure that. <clears throat> so with us being the second iteration team, we kind of had some sort of benchmarking tool and other sort of things that we could use to move forward. Um, so we were able to take the data from the previous team and kind of what they saw and what they used going around the track. And we were able to make updates and changes to the car of the previous design. In ergonomics, um, so for the Shell Eco Marathon requirements, we were set to um, meet some sort of requirement of getting in and out of the car at a certain time, um, also going around the track in a certain amount of time, uh, keeping the car at a speed that would um, not uh, be too high or too low. And with doing so, we had to kind of make our design and our decisions around these sort of requirements and regulations that the competition sets in place. So what we did to, research, uh, to reach our design. Um, so it kind of started with benchmarking and looking at other cars from the competition. Um, a lot of cars in these competitions will be um, carbon fiber and other sort of materials that can be very costly. Um, and with them using carbon fiber, they used a lot of monocoque chassis. And monocoque chassis are chassis that are um, not using any sort of uh, roll bars or tube frame, um, also known as space frames. Um, so with doing so, we got with our faculty member, John Wild, and we started talking about uh, belly tank uh, racers. Belly tank racers are pictured on the left. Um, these were uh, fuel tanks coming from planes from the early 19, 1900s. And while going through this time, they would take these aluminum, um, they would take these aluminum fuel fuselages and they would run them in the Bonneville salt flats. And when they did this, they were very lightweight and very fuel efficient because they were very streamlined in their body design. So with talking to John Wild, we talked about this and we kind of sat down and we moved on and we started implementing this into a design that would work for us. So when we looked at the old design of the old car, um, the older team definitely, uh, they were a little rushed on their design because um, they were notified they got into the competition a little bit later than normal because they were on the wait list. So they had to put something together really quick. Um, so the material choice and other design decisions were used. Um, they were not of preference and they were a lot heavier and they used a lot more material and they kind of built a car that was a little bit more bulletproof than what we actually needed. Um, so when we went through, we kind of had a good benchmarking spot and we were able to use SOLIDWORKS and other sort of tools to kind of see what the weight of the car is and what the strengths and weaknesses of that design and where they kind of stood and where we could kind of move on and make our own design decisions on materials or um, framing choices. So when we did this analysis and started moving into our own design, 
um, we ended up settling with that monocoque design. And if you look at the lower portion of the car, that is our monocoque tub. And in this monocoque tub, we have a series of other tubing that kind of integrate between a space frame and a monocoque chassis. And the space frame is pictured in the rear of the vehicle. Um, and with the monocoque and space frame integrated together, it was something that was really never seen in competition before that we had known of. So it was something we definitely had to toy around with and we had to kind of figure out and um, work with SOLIDWORKS and kind of develop our own skills and try to piece together what we were trying to uh, accomplish. With doing so, we were able to use all of our different tools in SOLIDWORKS and our other faculty members, and we we're able to kind of work from what we had on pictured in the left and end up at our somewhat final design on the right. Prototyping. Um, so we started off with some very simple prototyping processes. Um, what made it hard is that no one had ever done a monocoque chassis using a um, aluminum frame in competition. So it was hard to research and see kind of what other teams used to kind of get to where they were at. So what we started with is we took our backup driver, Sam Bowers, um, and we used him as a model and kind of, and, um, kind of just a tool as to how we were going to build the car and how we were going to um, fit the car to the actual driver themselves. Um, with doing so, we use simple prototyping processes using just uh, simple modeling, using seat designs, uh, body designs, using wood, cardboard, and other sort of tools. Um, and I know this sounds very simple, but it actually was a huge help to kind of visualize what would work for our driver and what would work for the feasibility of the car's actual design. So how we reached our goals. Um, so it, it took a lot to build this car. Um, and I, we could definitely give a huge shout out and thanks to John Wild and our other faculty members in the machine and fabrication shops. Um, this car was built 100% in-house except for our monocoque chassis. Um, and this, this framing was all designed on SOLIDWORKS and other sort of applications. Um, and we did this by just going through and using our simple uh, SOLIDWORKS analysis tools and as well as our other mathematical tools used in our classes throughout our time in the JMU engineering program. And we took these roll bars and these other, um, other sort of analyses and was able to implement them into our car's design. And what we ended up deciding on was an aluminum roll bar as well as aluminum monocoque chassis. And we were able to work through and kind of test fit and work together and see how everything would come. So how I mentioned that this car was kind of a one of a kind and um, we were building it to our own custom set of our own custom set of ideas. We did not have every tool in the house and there was no tool to buy that would meet our accommodations for designing and fabricating this car. So with some of our group members working in the machine shop, we were able to uh, fabricate and design sorts of tools that were able to form the car and form the other materials on the car to what we needed and to what we uh, needed to accomplish in our car's design. So with this being its own first iteration of a car, we definitely had some things that didn't work out. For example, our steering, it wasn't too rigid the first time around and we had to add some supporting elements in order to uh, achieve our rigidity required to actually uh, turn and make our way around the track. As well as our canopy. Um, bending the materials on the car was not the same as you know what we envisioned and what we were working towards. Um, for example, on the back half of the car, when we were uh, forming the back panels, we used uh, a paper design. And when we went to go put the aluminum on there and bend it the same way that we did with the thicker cardboard paper, it did not work out as planned. Um, so going through this, we definitely had to make some changes to the car because, I mean, as everyone knows, nothing goes as planned the first time through. So with these changes going through, we're able to actually uh, fabricate and design this car to function the way we wanted to um, just before we had to leave school. So what now? 
Um, so as all of you know, with all of our situations going on where we cannot be at school, um, we were unable to perform in our competition in Sonoma, California in early April of 2020 due to the coronavirus. Um, so with doing so, we have a car ready to go for the junior team to hop into next year and make their own modifications to bring to competition next year. Now, there's still a lot, a lot of work to do on the car um, as driver modifications must be made because as our seniors are graduating, we're going to have a different driver in the car. So some modifications to seating position uh, and throttle and uh, brake position, they're all going to need to be moved to uh, accommodate the new drivers that are coming in. Um, so with this, um, we're organizing our files and trying to kind of establish all the processes and um, a lot of the tools that we use to get to where we are and all the design decisions we made to get where, to where we are. And from this, we were able to start to relay some of this information to our junior team so they can take this car to competition and be as successful as we wanted to be. And I just want to say thank you to our faculty and the program. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you.